Here comes a storm What's going on you guys, it's D-Machine bringing you another video today. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Restoration Druids. I'm going to be splitting up the class Druids into two sections, Restoration and Feral, uh, mainly because there's just too much to talk about if I were to take the two specs together. Um, so today we're just going to focus on the healing aspect of Druids. I haven't made a video in a little while now, it's been a couple days too late. And the reason why is because I've gotten sick and I've also got new parts for my computer. So when I reformatted my computer, I, it took me a long time to get back all my programs, all my presets, things like that. I had a lot of stuff I had to set up. And then right after I got everything ready and I got confident to go, I got really sick. And I still kind of am, but uh, I felt better and I felt motivated to get this video out. So jumping right into defensives. I mean, the very first defensive I'm going to talk about is probably the most common and it's called Bark Skin. Now, Bark Skin is an ability that decreases the amount of damage taken that the Druid is going to be taking by 20% and also decreases the critical strike taken by 25 and that's due to the Glyph of Bark Skin. Um, that's a big deal. Uh, I mean, if you switch to a Druid and a Druid's your kill target and he pops Bark Skin, I would switch to something else, to be quite honest. Um, but the biggest deal about Bark Skin is its short cooldown. I just used that puppy and it's already 13 seconds from being used again. It's a 45 second cooldown. So that's the biggest deal about Bark Skin is that it's always up and ready to use. Uh, second defensive I'm going to talk about is Iron Bark. Very similar to Bark Skin, but it can be used on anyone, not just a Druid. And it reduces damage by, again, 20%. One minute cooldown. Still a real short cooldown. Symbiosis. Now, Symbiosis is an ability that basically uh, grants, the Druid, uh, grants the Druid an ability from the class he's casting Symbiosis on. And also gives that class an ability that the Druid would have. So, what's really cool about Symbiosis is um, the versatility that it brings to the table. Also, um, if you're not very educated on Druids, uh, you won't necessarily, there's that surprise factor. You see a Resto Druid uh, using Ice Block and you're like, what the heck? But I mean, in high rated arena, just about everyone knows uh, what Druids get from Symbiosis and what to look out for. So, I'm just going to talk to you guys real briefly on some common comps Resto Druids play and uh, what they get. So, Resto Druid playing Warrior Mage Druid. From the Warrior, they give the Warrior um, a Stampeding Roar, which is basically a freedom and also a speed increase. Uh, and they receive from the Warrior a Fear. But, from the Mage, he gets an Ice Block. And if he's and he have an Ice Block, he basically has an Out, another Trinket, right? And then the Mage gets a Healing Touch. Not the biggest deal in the world, but could potentially save a Mage's life if used correctly. Uh, LSD, if you're running with like an Elemental Shaman and a Warlock, you get Port from the Warlock and Spirit Walker's Grace from the, from the Shaman. But the Shaman gets uh, Solar Beam, that AoE Silence. And the Warlock also gets Rejuvenation, and here's why Rejuvenation's pretty good. Rejuvenation's pretty good because LSD does really good in dampening phases of Arena. When a lot of time has gone by and dampening occurs, LSD shines because of the, of the spread pressure. It's just absurd. So if you're running uh, with that comp, that can actually be game-breaking. But it, uh, I mean, it's very situational which one you use on Eli Shaman or the Warlock, uh, depending on... Um, what comp you're facing and also uh this play style of the druid himself and then there's of course god comp which is a uh, resto druid uh frost mage shadow priest and now you get leap of faith from shadow priest and you give the shadow priest tranquility so it's a no-brainer that most resto druids are all resto druids are going to be running with uh symbiosis on the frost mage to get that extra ice block wild mushrooms are in a ability that they place a shroom on the ground and after a few seconds it goes invisible now this mushroom over time will get bigger and bigger and when they're with a when someone who needs healing stands on top of it or within it um it will heal them for a considerable amount so just understand that the mushroom is actually going to be found within that green circle and even if they move this mushroom as long as it's still active and in play and not destroyed it will get bigger and bigger and heal for more and more. So Bubba J, he is my healer in 3v3 and he also plays a Resto Druid. Um, and he pointed something out to me. Uh, that Druid's most vulnerable part of their healing is falling behind. Um, they have hots and things like that, but their burst consists of 
um, the combination of Genesis and Soul of the Forest. Now, Soul of the Forest, after you use a Swiftman, will increase the next cast speed by 100%. Uh, also, when you use Swiftmend, you get a, a Harmony proc, which also increases just the general amount of healing. And uh, Genesis increases the amount of healing by 400%, the haste of the healing by 400%. So these heals will heal a ridiculous speed. Rejuvenation will be healing for an, um, an absurd amount with this combination. Um, so with that, with that combination, that's how Druids get their burst healing, and that's how they get back into the game. Um, but, I mean, Soul of the Forest... It increases the amount of uh, haste the next spell by a hundred percent the next spell not just rejuvenation So it can also be used as an offensive so using soul of the forest as an offensive uh, They're gonna be using it to cyclone, right? Uh, that's where that quick clo clone comes from But when they take soul of the forest, they're actually giving up incarnation So you're not gonna be seeing a big broccoli, but it's kind of the the norm to see druids running soul of the forest instead of the broccoli um now, most druids, most efficient druids, uh, understand that there is a harmony between control and healing. Now, if you're able to control the other team, you don't have to heal as much. And if you are not in control of the game, you obviously have to heal more. But getting like a CC off, even if, you're play if your DPS is at half of their health, if you get a cyclone off on, like, say, their warrior, you're actually going to catch up a lot faster. So there that's the that's honestly the druid's biggest offensive. It is not their bark skin, it's not their iron bark, but their control. Them being able to control the game and have that CC, whether it's rooting the uh, the melee DPS, typhooning off the DPS off of a bridge, or even uh, CCing the healer with a cyclone, or even cycloning the DPS with low health so it can prevent healing. Um, druids have the ability to control an entire game. Now, that also means that they have to understand that that harmony. If they're controlling too much and they get kind of tunnel visioned and controlling the other team, they will fall behind on healing. And a good druid will be able to to maintain that balance. So, Soul of the Forest is the ability that gives them that fast cyclone. Whenever they use Swiftman, they get 100% casting, but that's not the only way that they can get cyclones off. They can also use the good old Nature Swiftness. So, uh, just familiarize yourself with those icons and potentially can get like a, a sweet skill uh, grounding or kick or something like that to try to prevent those, those CC from happening. Um, but uh, Heart of the Wild is something that a lot of Resto Druids are running, and it's something that should not be ignored anymore. Heart of the Wild, um, I mean, when you're not pressuring the other team and the Druid doesn't have to worry about falling behind, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be spamming one and a half second Wraths in your face, and they're going to be hitting for 70k. So, don't, don't think Heart of the Wild is something that you won't need to pop a defensive. Third section of the guide, tips and tricks. Um, if a druid is overextended, what my favorite thing to do is to switch to them. It does really punish them, and more often than not, I get a bark skin. Now, if a druid's playing really offensive to the point where he's overextended majority of the game, I can actually get bark skins to the point where there's going to be a switch where he doesn't have a bark skin, and we are ultimately able to get defensive cooldowns or get their team to peel. And when there are the teams that are on the defensive, that's when we get a lot of defensive cooldowns and a lot of our pressure. Um, so just look for those opportunities to switch to an overly aggressive druid and one of those times you switch He may not have a bark skin Like Bubba J said earlier one of the biggest part of vulnerabilities that druids have is uh, Their inability to catch up on healing So if they're using heart of the wild or if they're tranquility or if they're even going for a drink uh, use their vulnerability to your advantage and push a lot of damage if they are far away or they are somewhere where they can't heal their overextending DPS uh, Take advantage of that and get a lot of pressure um, They're gonna have to use some sort of defensive cooldown like iron bark or something like it even when you're not using your offensive cooldowns because of That lack of ability to catch up on healing um, Soul of the forest uh, isn't always going to be able to catch up on healing the go-to move for a lot of Resto Druids is kind of like uh, the Disorient or Bash into Cyclone. Um, to prevent this, you need to have really good awareness. You need, to, you need to be able to know where your healer is. You need to be able to know where the Resto Druid is at the same time as you doing a considerable amount of damage. 
Personally, as a melee, that this is something that's very difficult for me. Uh, it's very hard for me to keep track of everyone on the battlefield when I'm trying to get my consistent damage down. Um, but understanding this and knowing it, you can if you get a slow, and this works also for priests because they're also putting their feather down and pushing in for fear, right? So if you're able to uh, at least communicate to your to your healer that the druid's pushing in for CC, or communicate to your or to your healer that I'm slow down the priest, they're running at you. Um, this will prevent more CC and ultimately prevent a lot of CC chains. Resto Druids can do a lot in cat form. Uh, they can Nature Swiftness heal, they can Iron Bark, they can Bark Skin. Uh, but this is the form that good Druids use to, uh, switch, to switch forms for Polymorphs and things like that. Um, so just understand that even though he's in cat form, he can still heal quite a bit. He can even use Cenarian Ward. So, earlier I was talking about those shrooms and how over time they heal more and more even if, they, uh, even if they're moved and they get bigger and bigger. Now, keeping track of these shrooms can be incredibly difficult and something that's just borderline impossible. Um, but the way that uh, Bubba J pointed it out to me is that when we go and kill for shrooms, it's because the, the DPS that we're currently putting pressure on is moving towards them. And we, we recognize their behavior moving towards this shroom and we get to the shroom and we kill it before that. Now, killing a shroom can be a really big deal. They could be freaking, they could be putting all their money down on that shroom, putting all their eggs in one basket for that shroom. And now if you kill that shroom, this will build a lot of momentum for you. You will get them on the defensive. And as a Red Paladin Hunter comp, that's everything to us. We're all a momentum-based comp. I mean, if we're on the defensive, uh, it's not the best position for us. Um, so just take that under advisement look for those shrooms when the DPS is running towards them. But if you're running by a shroom and uh, killing it's always going to help, no matter what. I mean, if you're reducing the amount of time that shroom has been alive, it's going to decrease the amount of healing it's going to do later on. So, so that's basically my guide, guys. Thank you for watching, and thank you, and I hope it helped. If it did help, please hit that subscribe button. I mean, I see my subscribers going up, I'm seeing my support going up, and it motivates me like crazy. Uh, so I really appreciate that, guys. And also, follow my Twitch. My Twitch, I stream every day, just about. I missed a couple days because I was sick, but I am streaming Rep Paladin PvP every single day. And I will be streaming some other classes, playing on EU. So uh, come and check me out at twitch.tv slash dmachine52. If you guys have any questions for me, anything like that, hit me up on my social media at facebook.com slash dmachinewow. Or dmachinetv, rather. And then my Twitter is at D Machine Wow. And uh, that's all I got, guys. So thanks for watching.